just like a tattoo. All right, so I've been uh, writing, editing, and toying away, tinkering away at this story. And I figured like, one thing that I haven't done with this book is like, listen to it. Like I've read it, I've read it aloud, I've read it to some people. I have some folks who looked over a couple chapters, but for fun, uh, I figured I'd try like a text to speech thing to see what, um, what is given. And so, <laughs> Uh, this will be like a snippet portion of one of the chapters. I'm not gonna say where it is. You'll see. But yeah, so let me let me see what it's hidden for. And um, I I don't know. I don't know. I heard a little bit, then I stopped, and I was like, no. Let me let me see if I can uh, capture the the reaction. So let's uh, let's listen to this together. I touched down at Bishop International Airport sooner than intended. The conversation with Lewis was still nagging at the back of my mind, but I couldn't let that prevent me from getting answers. I missed him, and I know there's a possibility that he would not be waiting for me when I make it back to California. I could even see where he was coming from, but if our time together hasn't warranted any grace or enough security to know that I would never mess up what we have built, then did we really build anything to begin with? I collected my luggage and made my way to the rental car station. While waiting on my keys, I took a long look out of the airport windows at the front of the building. I scanned the long-term parking area for the car that brought me here almost a year ago. I laughed to myself, there's no way that car was still sitting here after all this time. For a second, I imagined all the things that could have happened. Or maybe it was towed, did Miles come and pick it up, or did someone steal it? The attendant startled me. He handed me my keys, then I made my way out the door, in the car, and back down the road that brought me here in the first place. Being back here in Flint felt different. I was happy to breathe this air again, to feel the sun on my skin, but this time around, I felt like I was truly a visitor. Even though I was anxious, I felt a calm wash over me. Sure, I was here on a mission, but something about returning home, no matter how traumatic your exit is, always felt comforting. I rode on the same streets that were still being worked on. I passed by landmarks that have been standing since I was a child and some that were replaced with new and shiny buildings. My intention for this visit may have been set in stone, but being in this space again convinced me that this trip was definitely needed. I made my way to one Hurley Plaza as if drawn here purely by force. Hurley Medical Center was the main hospital in Flint. It was the hospital where pretty much everyone was born. The building may have changed over the years, but the location had always been the same. I parked my rental and collected my black Telfar bag. It was a gift from Lewis. I'd mentioned how nice I thought those bags were. And by the next time I saw him, he had a black circle Telfar wrapped for me. That memory made me smile, but the image of Hurley staring back at me wiped that smile away. I made my way through the front doors and to the receptionist's desk. A beautiful older woman with thick gray hair greeted me. How you doing today, baby? I admitted. I've been better, she continued. Well, God saw fit to wake you up another day. I forced a smile. That he did. How may I help you, dear? I looked around. This place had changed. Not that I've been in the hospital too many times, but the lobby looked very different from the last time I was here. Miles and I came to visit his uncle, Uncle Moody. He was an older man who had already been sick but was hurt on the job. Okay, that was interesting. So, so I have some thoughts but I would honestly love to know what your thoughts are. You dear watcher, reader, dearest reader. <laughs> um, this was interesting, I guess because I have sat with this world and with this story for so long where it only inhabited my brain that like hearing it out loud, I'm still dealing with it. <laughs> so, I have had this story, I've, I've had it for quite some time. Um, I've added on to it. There are other parts of this world that are kind of connected in some ways, but for the most part, this story has existed with me. I've had people who have read a few snippets here and there, a few chapters here and there, giving me some feedback. I've um, had some people who I could bounce ideas off of, like, oh, you know, if this happens, what are your thoughts, blah, blah, whatever. and. Throughout all of that, even with me reading the story myself, hearing it from someone else's voice, albeit a text-to-speech app, um, it's still, I don't know, it's, it's, it, 
it's I'm shook. Uh, I truly enjoyed hearing my words. Um, I heard some things that I maybe want to tinker with, uh, as I am still in the revising, drafting other portions, editing, like I'm still in that stage of the process. So this was actually like a really good, not speed bump, but really good, like, I don't know, bookmark to this particular chapter in the overall process of writing this uh, series. This is interesting. I would like to know if you're an author, writer, um, or even just a reader, like, do you do this as well when it comes to your own books or books that you're listening to? So not, I don't want to encroach on like audiobook territory because that's not what this is. This is purely for me to hear my words spoken back to me. This is not a easy way to do audiobook. No, it's not it. So I just wonder how many authors actually go through this process because this is new for me. Um, and I liken it to my attempts at dictation. I've seen other authors use the dictating model to get words down. And I remember trying it maybe two times in particular and I did not give it the good old college try. I did not, I'm not gonna hold you up. I was like, I can't get with this. But hearing my story this way makes me interested in attempting dictation again. So if you have any tips on that, you know, dictation or even text to speech or whatnot, let me know. This is this is interesting. So I all in all, I think I am happy with like this experience right here was really good. Not that I was losing interest in my own story, but this kind of set a fire underneath me to like really dig my heels in and, and get to it even more. <laughs> um, I don't I don't know what it is. Again, um, I don't know, y'all. This is my, I don't know. I don't know, because this is my, my baby. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm kind of at a loss of words. I feel, I feel kind of silly. Um, but what's funny, haha -ha funny to me is that this option has been available for quite some time. I've actually utilized the text-to-speech um, before in my uh, Blurred uh, Nerd podcast. I've done it with uh, like acting out certain scenes, maybe having it um, do different dialogues with other characters, just like do with the voice acting. So I've utilized this before. I've just never done it for my written work. It's been for my like voice acting, um, skit type stuff with my blur stuff, but for an actual work of mine, I haven't done it. And it's so odd because this has been around for a while and I've been knees deep in this story for so long. And to think that this option was there and it never crossed my mind to use it, though I've used this before. So I don't know, it's just, it, that feels a little odd, but I'm going to sit with my feelings about this and, you know, maybe either add on to this video or maybe in a, another one, maybe discuss it. But all in all, this was, this was interesting. And I would recommend maybe if you are writing your story, just using it in general, but especially if you are at a place where maybe there's some form of like writer's block or anxiety or frustration or whatever. Cause I heard a lot of things that I maybe want to change and alter, but those things that maybe change, maybe they won't, maybe they're mistakes, maybe they're not like that. The mistakes of it, as far as grammar or punctuation, all that, any anxiety I have about that with my written work kind of went out the window when listening to this. My biggest focus was, what does the story sound like? So I don't know. All in all, I think this is an interesting little experiment and I do hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of my uh, writing that you heard there. Uh, I would honestly like to know what are your thoughts, but you know, just let me know that you're here. <laughs> so all in all, I am Rain Coleman. I am a writer. I am an author. I write stories about black people in various situations from love stories to contemporary stories, coming of age, 
Afrofuturistic, period piece, paranormal, all that good stuff. Right now I am in my contemporary bag, finishing out this work in progress. So follow me on my writer's journey. And until next time, I'll catch you next time. <laughs> all right. I let you get up under my skin I wanna let the ink dry But wanna try till it's right Here we go again If I am love and love is I I need you more than I would admit